be like, hey crew, <laughs> get a little close. We are doing uh, safety gear and last checks today. And um, last checks sort of turned into this. Uh, boat got totally torn apart <laughs> working on the uh, water pump. So that's uh, what happened today, <laughs> which is fine. It's part of it. Here comes Captain. He's going to come check on me. Tell us how it's going, sir. That's right, crew. If we are going offshore, it is time to talk about safety gear. Follow along as Philip and I go through all of the gear, equipment, and things we keep aboard the boat to keep us on the boat, or maybe get us off the boat, or just help us out in an emergency situation. And watch as things get crazy in the engine room. We just replaced the two primary fuel filters. Oh God. I'm kind of scared. It's been fun world. <laughs> All right, let's talk safety gear because we have a lot of cool stuff on the boat that helps us voyage safely. Some gear designed to help keep us on the boat, other items help get us off the boat if need be, and some really cool electronics to contact the Coast Guard or rescue personnel in case of an emergency. Let's start with the jack lines. And we have two that we'll set up, one on port, one on start. Ours are fairly new, we got them for the um, Keys trip in 2014, so they're all shiny and pretty. <laughs> but um, some people have had them for years and Captain Ryan taught us that it's flat so if in case you step on it on the deck it doesn't make your foot roll. But I'll show you how we set it up. Bow to stern. Alright, we're going to take one end of our jack lines and show you how we set it up. This will be, um, we'll probably run it the entire, have them run on the boat the entire uh, voyage just so they're already ready to go, you know, but we'll mostly tether in only at night when we have to come up on the deck or rough seas, you know, if it's rough out there, um, but we'll probably have them out for the um, whole voyage just so they're ready. It's not something we have to do in weather or dark or anything like that. Hey, Luke. I think we're going to run from each um, chalk to the chalk at the back. That'll be a nice straight line. And while we had come to the boat that day with just the best of intentions of last minute packing and running through our safety gear, we ran into a fun, unfortunate problem with the water pump, which I'll share with you later. And Philip's working away on the water pump. How goes it? Right. Slow but steady. Slow but steady? You don't even have the pump off yet, do you? Oh God, no. Ah, he's like, I might have one screw loose. Okay. I think I've figured out how to do this. And Captain may want to look at it too. Yeah, I came in right here because on the deck, I feel like you want it on the companionway. I can show you later. Okay. He's busy with water pump. He's not excited about jack lines right now, but I am. Jack it up. Um, so here's our jack line. I'm gonna run the whole length of the boat. Uh, I have them down here initially, running along the deck. And um, for one thing, I guess you know when you come out here and your PFD, like having to get down here, is a little more cumbersome than here you know where it's almost not eye level but you know a little bit more countertop level than the floor you know because you want everything as safe as possible and this is more center line of the boat you know from here you probably have about two feet of stretch with it and then if you move it up here it doesn't stretch completely you know as far it doesn't go over the edge of the boat so i like up on the companionway that's what i'm gonna go with um but you do want a fair lead so i brought it in under the dodger run it through this cleat right here for a cinch point there and then we have it here as well for right when you step out. I continued running the jack lines through the best leads possible back to the aft chalk on the stern of the boat. This is my Mustang hydrostatic automatic something attic grease lightning. Pelican clip. 
two rings together. We have a long and a short for two separate lengths of uh, walking and moving around on the boat and two possible connection points for more safety. And Philip, the uh, captain, has showed me you want to be able to tether in right when you step out of the companionway is important. And even when you're headed out to go like out. I can be tethered right here. And while I'm tethered there, I can also tether over here. So I'm at both places. See, I'm tethered here on the inside. And then also tethered here on the outside. So tether both points. And then whenever I'm ready to move, And I can walk, and I've got my PFD on, I'm tethered, the tether comes with me, goes anywhere I want. If I need to go up to the mast, you know, I can find another point on here if I want to look for somewhere else to tether. Here's a good one right here. There. So now I'm tethered two points, two points on the boat. And in case I start to fall, yeah, this guy's got me here in case a wave pushes me or jerks me. And if for whatever reason I was in the process of clipping him somewhere else and a wave hits me then, luckily I've got this guy here that even if I go overboard, I'm not going away. I'll just be right by the boat swimming along. <laughs> so that's the purpose of the jack lines is even if you fall over, you stay with the boat because you don't want to get lost at sea. And our clips are kind of cool in that they're, they're one-handed. As long as you press this one with your thumb, you can do them with one hand, which is nice. Some of them are two-handed and I don't like that. Because why? You want one hand at least somewhere on the boat. You don't want two hands free um, to try to you know, clip your tether in. Then you might fall off in the middle of clipping it and you weren't clipped yet. So one hand is definitely my opinion. Good to go. And now I traverse back. And I found the safe thing back put. And I can remain tethered here in the cockpit. Go down below. Um, got these a few years back. These are the hydrostatic okay. offshore. It's got the harness. I showed him how in. to check the canister. I was showing him. Yeah, the one thing that we should probably pick up that I forgot to get oh, is, is a an replacement extra cartridge. Canister. Yeah, a replacement cartridge. Where do we get them? Um, we should have them at West. Um, definitely want to always check your canister here. See the green light? means it's good to go. So as you put it on, give that a look. If it's red, you replace the cartridge, and I'll tell you that on there. It's green, good to go, red replace. Um, so Ryan reminded me of that when we did the trip to Isabel Harris. You know, as you put on your life jacket, just give it a little look-see, make sure the cartridge is ready to deploy. So you definitely want to make sure it'll inflate right here. And then you get these two rings here for your tether. Take your, it's called a pelican clip here both rings, bring them together. I think it's called a D-clip too. It's also another name for it. Make sure it's secure. And they do the D-clip here so you can have quick and easy deployment if you need it. Um, you know, you wanna be tethered to the boat, but if something happens and your tether has got you in a place where maybe you're you know, drowning or something, you know, you're stuck um, to where you're in a position that's worse than being tethered, you can, with one swift pull, go and then you're released from the tethers in case they've got you, you know, pinned in a position that's more dangerous. So that's the reason for that, because it's a one quick trick pull. And then you get your tethers to maneuver the boat. And I've showed you why these are so awesome, because the one-handed, very nice. Now you've seen some of the gear that helps keep us on the boat. Let's look at some of the gear that helps get us safely off. Meet our life raft. It's about 75 pounds. So, um, and I couldn't remember that the 24 hours only did we decide mm -hmm. that? Yeah, it's just all it is, is the only difference is the amount of provisions that they put in there. That's it. Yeah, and to keep you, you know, sustained for 24 hours. Yeah, so, all right, so it looks like you put it on a cleat. You know what I'm just yeah. loop it on a cleat. Yep, and then you throw it off the boat. Yeah, and it's got I was thinking it's hydrostatic. I don't think it is hydrostatic, I think it's, it's just a cord jerk pulled, cord. Yeah, yeah so okay. Six and, uh, meters, 20 feet back. So that's how long, that's how far it'll go before it jerks. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, 
and then you cut the line obviously once you're in the um, raft yeah unless you know you want to stay with the boat like if it's a fire well, goes, right whatever if there's a reason to stay right, with the boat right you know? yeah you always want to try to do that of course you What's really that? shouldn't be getting in the life that's just how to flip it over if, if it's for whatever uh, reason it gets tumbled okay mm -hmm. is that all the supplies in it is that what they're showing okay uh-huh interesting all right we'll just have to see if it's something you and i can throw overboard yeah, not too bad for you to pick up I guess we throw it on this cleat, right? Yeah. Come under the lifelines, put it on it the really cleat. Doesn't matter. And then throw the it. Lifelines. We, 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 we ain't gonna be worried about no lifelines then. You like, Get and the life raft really isn't too hard to maneuver. Uh, the weight of 75 pounds is something Philip and I considered long and hard, and we felt like it was an amount that we could manhandle, especially in an emergency when your adrenaline's bumping. Huh. Life raft, I think she's 75 pounds. So she'll go in there. Quite ready for her yet, so I'm gonna leave her here till Philip and I make that executive decision. But that will be her home because she's heavy, which is important, and so we need her aft closer to the stern, and that'll be a good weight whew, filler right there. And I talked about our life sling, and we have that all safety checked and flanked the way it'll just come out, no issues, we hope. Our life sling we keep attached outside of the stern rail on the starboard side, tied to the stern rail with a bowline knot. And it's a good thing we checked it a few weeks earlier because we did find the end of the line that's exposed always to the sun did have a lot of sun damage. See? Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't even that hard. Like that's wow. the life sling. Yep. Get you back in the boat, you think? I don't think so. <laughs> I think I'd be screwed. I'd be like, great. See you later. <laughs> wow. It's crazy though because it feels so strong in here. It's it's UV. Like it's the UV damage. Heart. So I think maybe find where it ends, and then we can just tie that on. I think so. Just tie that onto the yeah. railing? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that'll save up. I think that'll thing. do the trick. But man, that's frightening. And just make sure it's hooked correctly around the rings at the other end. Okay. I'll do it. Now that we've shown you some of our stay on the boat, get off the boat gear, let's talk about some of our ditch gear. Right, so we went with the new Coast Guard approved. Um, Weems and Plath, right? Yeah, Weems and Plath. It uh, basically takes the place of a flare. Oh, okay. Um, how long does it last? I can't remember I how long these batteries hours? go. I want to say 24 hours. I think that's but what you told me. It's a lot longer than a flare. Right. It's a lot less dangerous, you know, dealing oh, with the flare. Oh, because flare and flame and Flame fire. and all that stuff. And then the other thing about the flares is, you know, they expire and then you disposing of them can be difficult right to, uh, do properly safely so anyway this is just nice it's you know you put it on there you can run it run it up a halyard if you're in and, trouble and uh, if you're in trouble and then we have a day visual day flag um, what do to you comply mean? It's, it's an orange flag day flag okay yeah it's just uh it's there to signal when you see it that there's an emergency. It's required that you have a day and a night. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Because yeah, you cool. would, nobody would be able to see this in during the day. the day. So you just have an orange flag and that tells people you're in trouble. Yeah, it's I a didn't know that. Flag. Okay. So you get that, and then we get the personal e perv which really the only difference between this one and the larger units are this one only goes for 24 hours. Okay. And the larger ones, they go 48. And you're saying how long it sends a beacon? Yeah. Okay. So. And you just did the self test? Yeah, we did. Which we need to do anyway, because what batteries does it take? Um, it, it doesn't. Okay. It's inside here. So this okay. expires next year. Okay. February, actually. Wow. <laughs> We're kind of kind of close. We didn't yeah. even notice that. I didn't see that. So is it li maybe lithium or something that holds battery yeah, life for years? Yeah, and I think the battery, yeah, it's like five years. Okay. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. That's the registration date. It's okay. good until 12 18. Okay. okay. So we got a couple more years. Sorry about that. Good. No. That's just our um, registration. With, Do sorry. we have to re register? Okay. Um, renew? Just renew it. That's all. Okay. Great. So, But yeah, you saw it flash, so it's good. And that's not for the boat, that's for the person? Yeah, it's, a, it's they call them PLBs, personal locator beacons, actually, because. You can put it on your life vest or whatever instead of um, you know, the e perp being on the boat. But yeah, it follows the person. Okay. So you can take it with you on another boat if you wanted to. And we did. We took that across the Atlantic. Yeah, we took it across the Atlantic. It's just a 
I have our own personal backup one. Well, I haven't filled up the ditch bag yet, but... But we can talk about what we normally have in it. Yeah, so there's some duct tape in here. The foghorn. Ooh, so, old school. Yeah, <laughs> and we just got old P-57. What's that? Oh, like, is that a military piece? Of? Yeah, it's just kind of based on those. It's got a little rusty, musty. Probably wouldn't open any damn thing. <laughs> but, uh, let's see what's in here. Should be. I know, we need to things. go through this anyway. Um, so, this is just like a little kit. It's got a compass, it's got Survival a whistle. Kit. Yeah, as you can see, just pick it up at the sporting goods store. We got an emergency fishing kit in here. I did together. make that. Line, three hooks. Um, got dive knife which is nice because it's got blunt ends so it's a tool very cool oh like a flathead screwdriver yeah or prying or whatever you needed got a handheld compass whistle another handheld compass so i always like to know where we are yeah. solar blanket this is the visual distress flag i was telling you about oh uh, so that's our daytime flag yeah do you just run that up the boat somewhere or on your yeah i just run yeah. up a hire and then uh like a leatherman you got a leatherman so Maybe. we'll throw some uh, some water in the ditch bag, obviously that'll in throw some power like bars. Peanut butter or something or yeah, yeah. Or power bars, whatever you like. And you're floating out there waiting on the coast guard to come get you. Will you do any um, regular flares in there or just the wings um, and flashlight? flight? Yeah, we've got uh, we've got I found some pistol. twelve gauge red uh, red flares. Yeah, there's a pistol heater. Yeah, so we got this here. Just that goes in the ditch bag. Okay. Yeah, it'll end up in the ditch bag. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. None of these, these are not expired, they're good? Um, most of all these are expired, so. <laughs> that whole That's why we have the wings in plow. <laughs> yeah. So, I haven't bought any new, new ones of these yet. Okay. But yeah, the, the number one thing is make sure we get the ear probe because if mm -hmm. nothing else, that's the That'll most important. Tell people how to come save us. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll have our wetsuits on the boat too uh -huh. in this passage because the Gulf's already cold. And um, try to grab those if we know we're going in the those. water. They'll yeah. be right with the ditch bag, and then um, it's good for UV protection too if we're out there a couple of days for yes. whatever reason. Yeah. yeah, we shouldn't be more than a few hours in the water. Hopefully, if the ear go off. Okay. Um, Does it float? The ear perb. Yeah. Um, I imagine it does. I can't remember. Okay. I'm trying myself to learn. All right. Great. Grab the ditch bag, the e perv and then deploy the life raft if you can. Stay connected to the boat if you think it'll still be safe. If not, cut the line, and you've already hailed the Coast Guard, and after that, you just be smart, stay warm. Yeah. Don't injure yourself. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, stay calm. Don't we've got panic. a handheld VHF, and we've got a handheld GPS that will also be in the bag. Okay. So we'll be able to use the VHF, hopefully, if somebody's... Like 15 miles, maybe. Yeah, it's Six, got Channel like, 16. Yeah, it's got DSC on it, so it sends out a signal to anybody that's within that range. Oh, very cool. Okay, yeah, I didn't so, know that. Yeah. I'm learning too, people. This mm. is why Captain is so smart. Yeah. Stay safe out there, but travel far! So the life raft we talked about, uh, we're going to sort of figure out more of a procedure on that because we definitely need to know um, exactly how we're going to put it into the lazarette and when we go to take it out, um, where we're going to cleat it and exactly how to deploy that. Um, but we'll run through that, you know, before we leave the dock or like right when we're motoring out, you know, kind of safe waters, um, go through all that. So we've got the life raft, we've got um, the man overboard life sling, which we easy to deploy, throw overboard if um, one of us goes overboard. We've got our jack lines, we've got our tethers, we've got our PFDs, and Philip talked about all of the like really emergency, like holy crap, the boat's sinking kind of stuff. We've got the EPER personal, uh, the flares, that Weems and Plath is really cool. It's just a light that goes and goes and goes. And we've got um, everything in the ditch bag you saw that's in there, survival gear um, and all of that stuff. So we're ready to go and that's super emergency. You know, we don't expect any of that to happen. It's really rare that, that uh, there's that dire straits out there, but you have to be ready. You know, you never know when you're traveling in a self-sustained vessel that uh, something could happen. You know, it could take on water or a fire or who knows, the keel could fall off. I'm kidding, it won't happen. I epoxy that shit. But another part of our safety plan is the Delorme. Uh, which is a satellite tracker uh, to definitely give uh, the Coast Guard or people we have, uh, you know, planned ahead of time to be our emergency contacts. Um, that if something happens, we're in trouble, like real big trouble, and we need to let people know. We've got SOS option. Click that. 
uh, message goes out, Annie and Philip are in trouble and need help, and message goes to the Coast Guard and they'll come looking for us because they have GPS coordinates of exactly where we're at. So that's a very cool device in that regard, safety. But it's also a very fun device because this is how we keep up with uh, family and friends and followers and we can message them along the way and talk on the iPad, which is really fun and just chat with people and post it on Facebook, our conditions and weather and all that stuff. So kind of work and play. That's a really fun device and not too bad. I want to say it put us back maybe $180 for the device and then $60 a month for unlimited text and unlimited tracking. Definitely affordable to have a way to chat with people while you're underway and a way to hail um, emergency services if you need. So that's part of our safety plan. These spares, uh, I'm gonna go through all that. We've got a lot of work to do. But... And I got it done. This week's blog post will include, in addition to the safety gear video, a complete inventory of plaintiff's rest for the Cuba trip. This includes all of our food, clothing, tools, supplies, and spares, a detailed list of what we keep on the boat for offshore voyaging. But um, we still need to go through all of like the zincs, impellers, um, and now we've used a couple of the seals for the water pump, so we're gonna be down a few on that. Wait, what? What happened with the water pump? Yeah, I haven't even had a chance to tell you. <laughs> Real quick. And so kind of today was gonna be uh, inventory and pack, which would have meant put away all this goodness. Um, we were going to pack that all on the boat and um, inventory it, get it where it needed to be. And then one last thing was going to be very easy, simple stuff. Change the fuel filters, which wasn't too bad. The one big uh, secondary, which very visible, easy to see, drop a new one in. The two primary are on the engine, not terrible. You know, it's like me on the back with nuts and lock washers and Philip on the front with a wrench. Um, and pop that in. Uh, so we did those two, tighten the alternator belt just a little bit because I saw, you'll see in the video, it's like had a little bit too much vibration and we wanted to like, you know, lessen that. Okay, they're a little tighter. Very simple things. It's gonna be like hour and a half engine work and then five hours packing whatever inventory. And we saw a leak from the water pump while we were running the engine to check the alternator belt, so. thing you want to see when you're about to head offshore and that's why I look the way I do. Um, so we rebuilt the water pump today. I didn't even know we could do that or had the tools to do that so kudos to Philip who had all the spares necessary. Uh, spare seals both for the oil side and the water side. You, you got what I need. <laughs> this just a friend and a spare bushing to put back into the water pump because the bushing in there was cracked and compromised. We didn't even know that. Um, you know, the engine was holding temp fine, so there wasn't any signs of a problem um, other than the leak, which was kind of hard to see. You definitely had to be in the engine room like I was, so fortuitous that I was there to see it. And we did find that one of the phalange on the um, impeller was busted off, so definitely time to replace that anyway. So all good things, you know, it's this, this case in point, it's good to look at everything, if you find a problem, solve it as fast as you can. Um, since we're so glad this happened here at the dock, because it was easy to fix here. You know, it's not a great day, but it's not a hard day. We have all the stuff necessary. So cool, water pump is about to get back in place. Philip had to go to the AutoZone store to get that black gasket glue. Um, and I am doing the last minute stuff. So we just want to say this will be our last video message before we cast off for Cuba. And we're so excited to bring you guys along with us as much as we can on the map share Facebook while we're underway. Um, if I have Wi-Fi in Havana, I'll post anything I can. If I don't, you know, we'll use the Delorme just to say hey and, and check in and we'll touch base when we get in Key West where we're hoping to have a little patron get together party there, which will be really, really cool. And I don't know, you know, when the next video will come out. It might be a week and a half, it might be two weeks. I don't know, which is kind of cool that I don't know. <laughs> That's the fun part of breaking away. Um, but I'll get it to you as soon as I can. And we're thinking 
Um, this will wrap up season four on our how to sort of prepare your mind, body, soul boat to go offshore. I hope you found it helpful. We definitely tried to put in a lot of really good tips and a lot of just really fun videos too because it's work, it's play, you know, it's all things in one, which is why we're so passionate about it. Um, very rewarding and very fulfilling and very fun. So we wanted to put a lot of those videos in too for you. So this will wrap up the how-to series and we're thinking starting uh, season five. Can't believe I'm that far along. Season five on the YouTube channel, uh, travel. Just all the places we go and the neat uh, voyages and ventures we've been on. I just love to share that with you. You know, now that we've done all this hard how-to work, let's get out and freaking travel. So we'll start with Isla Harris. I'll do definitely a couple videos on that at least. We'll start the Cuba series and wherever it takes us from there. So very excited to share all that with you. Thank you so much for everything you've done to follow us, support us, comments. Um, all of that means the world to us and we love to give back and we've got our gift of cruising going and we're sharing everything with you. So have one will travel is going to Cuba. Merry Christmas and thanks. We'll see you next year probably. Bye guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to havewindwilltravel.com to check out all of the stories, posts, photos, videos, books, blogs, and cruising opportunities we post there in order to help you get out on the water too. Get inspired and get on board. Come on.